Greetings, I'm Chevalier and I bid welcome to the initial situation and guide of the Crimea or Crimea or whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is the expansion guide, the part 2. So let's just delve, delve into it quite fast. So the expansion of Crimea should primarily focus on the killing the enemy hordes because they are quite easy to kill as well as uh, just saving uh, some time, just waiting a little bit until you have the necessary amount of troops to attack Karakoyulun, the Timurids and Ottomans. So you can expand, so can you build the dominance over the region around here and around here as well. By this, this is gonna probably be your uh, be your mid game by the time you kill the Ottomans, as well as basically having a huge amount of uh, manpower and troops to fight against Ming to fight against uh, India as well. Pretty much a, a standard horror gameplay, just attack, 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 attack like a madman. Other than this, uh, the expansion uh, ways are pretty standard, either that you go from this side or this side, the horde expansion is quite standard. But let's just delve into it for the initial situations here, uh, the initial steps that you must uh, do. So, first and foremost, I will see that you need to attack the Gong Horde. You must not let them get any allies, because they're gonna be really problematic. So just ally no guy, ally Kazan. If you can't ally Kazan, just ally no guy and attack them. Try to make sure that they lose troop, that uh, no guy loses their troops and just go for a siege and do a siege battle. If you have a coastal provinces, a uh, coastal province, it's gonna be really hard to to uh, to siege. So you can actually have the extra advantage, especially because it's a level three. So basically, by the time they actually try to siege your capital here, which is a level three coastal fort. You're probably gonna take both Astrakhan and Saratov here, then you can actually piece them out and leave them with some lands. Uh, I recommend taking this and kill, uh, taking all the way up to Tambov and killing the what's called the, the border with Moscovy. At the same time, you can also go like this and take uh, all the way up to here. So take Lower Dawn, Trexan, Urek, Etrana, and Tambov. And everything that ha that has an extra uh, Astrakhan core, basically. So Manchik, Mahar, Ume, Astrakhan, Turek. Uh, just go like this: Lower Don, let's say Lower Don, Saratov, Utek, Etrana, Tambov. Uh, then Majar here, uh, Manchik, uh, Kuma, and Astrakhan. Or Manchik, Kuma, and Astrakhan here. Basically, that will allow you to take this, this fort as well, and at the same time give you a CB against uh, Nogai. The same thing if you look at here, you have already an Astrakhan core here, so you can actually release Astrakhan from there, but remember, if you release Astrakhan, you're gonna lose the CB on Nogai, so um, release Astrakhan immediately, then declare war on Nogai, or, or Kazan, because you have to break the alliance with Nogai. So try to remember this as well, it's gonna be a little bit problematic if you're not smart enough. As well as you can attack Kazan if you have the Tambov, of, the Tambov of core, because you can, actually fabricate, uh, you can actually get a CB from Tambov to attack Kazan. Then we can then, uh, okay, so this is step one basically. Uh, after the step one, I recommend just attacking these guys here, Teodoro, so you can actually get a province that has the feudalism, uh, so you can actually convert to have feudalism ready. That will allow you to gain, uh, to lower the tech cost. Then, attack Chukasia, attack Genoa, and attack these guys here, simply because you want to, to feed Astrakhan uh, as many lands as possible. Remember that these guys have the f plus 50% uh, core here, which is quite annoying. So you should do this, but at the same time you shouldn't do it. Uh, it's gonna be really problematic. The only reason I'm recommending this is because they are your rivals. So you should at least attack them and take one province. Uh, for example, take uh, their capital, so you can attack Georgia as well. That will allow you to basically uh, get power projection. And that's all you need from this area here, power projection. Later on, when you don't need those passes anymore, or you have, out, out, uh, you have outgrown them, just uh, focus on these guys only. Then you're, when you're big enough, just go into Kara. If you want to move into Kara, you should take them. But we'll talk about this later on, let's just go into step by step. So, attacking Golden Horde, taking Golden Horde, weakening them, attacking Teodor and killing Teodor. Attack in Chircassia. Teodora and Chircassia, if they don't have any allies, can be attacked at the same time. Just take uh, this land here, their capital, and from Georgia, when you attack Georgia, take Bengrelia and Goria. Uh, what will this allow? It's quite simple. This will simply allow you to have a CP against Kara, which is going to allow you to attack Kara with the help from either Temurids, if you can ally them, 
or the Ottomans. Most likely the Ottomans are gonna be your first ally. With that, with that in mind, you're gonna ha have the help from the Ottomans. Remember that Erzum is an Ottoman core, so that is gonna be annoying if you take it. The Ottomans are gonna be pissed off, so keep that in mind as well. If you don't want to take the core of Erzum, just move into Mongolia, Korea, and Samseke, Sam, Samseke, and just take this course here. From this side here, I recommend releasing Persia and having your second ambassador as Persia. Right? So, second ambassador as Persia, then to some degree, hope that the is break loose and they're gonna feed Persia back. Now, you have to kill on a Golden Horde, yeah, and you have the CP against Kazan, attack Kazan. After I've killed the, killed the Golden Horde, break the alliance with Nogai so you can attack Nogai as well. The expansion into this side should be quite standard. You just have more troops than they have, and they have no allies, just attack them and try to trade capitals if at all possible so you can take those lands. This is pretty much standard stuff. Uh, after, if you look at the cultures here, after you've taken all the lands from Nogai, Sibreya, whatever floats your boat and some lands from here, start uh, integrating Astrakhan. You need that development so you can actually have more troops so integrated as soon as possible so you can get that development. Then you release a vessel from Kazakh here. Then start attacking Guz uh, after attack Guz Begli a vessel from Kazakh. That's gonna be your third vessel. Uh, that's gonna be quite nice. Third vessel, then moving to the Oryats, Chagatai, Yarkand, Mongolia, Boratia here, and so moving to this side. So let's go for a small recap for your first 50 years. So the first five years, the Golden Horde should die, followed by the, the next five years, the fall of uh, Theodore, Shakasia, Genoa, and these guys here if you feel like it. Then threaten the Kara. So this is gonna be the first 15 years you should take control over most of this region here. Followed by that is attacks against Kazan, uh, Nogai. Then stopping. Then seeing if you can attack Kara. If you can attack Kara, attack Kara with the help from the Ottomans. If you can't attack Kara and the Ottomans will not join you or if the Tigris will not join you, just uh, try to build more troops by attacking uh, Uzbek and moving slowly slowly to this side. Remember that that's gonna be quite problematic if the Timurids actually rival you and want to kill you, so try not to get a uh, border, a long border with the Timurids so they won't actually want to uh, attack you. They might also attack you if you rival the if you allied the Ottomans and their, their historical rivals, so that's going to be problematic on that side as well. So, these pretty much are your first 50 years. If you take lands from Kara, just release Persia and uh, that's going to be fine. So this is the early game. Uh, nothing much more to say, I mean, it's a horde, just attack, attack, attack. For the mid game, you should see uh, what your opportunities are. If you can attack the Mamelukes and the Ottomans haven't taken the lands up to here, attack them and try to stop the Ottomans from expanding into this side. That's gonna be your primary target, stopping the Ottomans from expanding into the Mamelukes. If not, just slowly expand into Arabia and you're gonna be fine there. And slowly expand into this side whenever possible as a tertiary war goal so you can get those gold mines and that trade power from these regions here and even stopping the, the Europeans from going to Cape Verde if you want to go for the exploration part of things, but by the time you get here, they might actually uh, have arrived in the, the Cape of Good Hope already. Now, for the Timurids. If the Timurids are dead, basically by rebels, that's gonna be great for you. Uh, that means that you can actually feed lands from Persia automatically without any wars, then you can integrate Persia and get a decent amount of lands. If the Timurids haven't died, then try to use the, the Ottomans with favors to attack the Timurids, if you can. Like, they should help you because they, they might have they might rival them. Uh, they haven't rivaled them, but they might rival them later on. So that's gonna help you to some degree. Now if this hasn't happened and the Timurids are not dead, wait until you have the necessary troops then kill them. I mean there's nothing much more to say. You might not be able to beat the Ottomans by the time you uh, leave the mid game, in my opinion, if they haven't uh, died already. And even they didn't have uh, problems with rebels. For this side here, this is gonna be your tertiary war goal, just to get points. So slowly move like this and like this into India, and uh, raise and release, raise, uh, raise and feed, raise and feed onto uh, those lands to your vessels. Now let's go to more pressing stuff, Poland, Lithuania. So 
If you have an alliance with the Ottomans and Moscovy, attack Poland and Lithuania. Or if the Ottomans are really big, then you can attack Poland and Lithuania. If these uh, requirements have not been met, do not attack Poland. Do not attack Poland and Lithuania yet. They might have an ally in Bohemia. They might have an, uh, an ally in uh, I don't know Denmark. Depend no, depends on their luck. See, they might have an oh they traveled Denmark perfect. So they might have an, uh, an enemy in Denmark. Uh, or an ally in Denmark, or an ally in Sweden. Uh, as we put it, they're gonna be really troublesome to dislodge. So you need at least, uh, let's say, 16 to 18,000 troops, even more, to, to basically kill Poland or Lithuania. I would say even 100,000 troops. That can be easily gathered if you actually have, uh, let's say, 25, 30 yourself, with about 40 from the Ottomans and uh, about, uh, let's say, 30 from the Moscovy. Uh, especially if you have their their vassals with them that will allow you to actually attack Poland and Lithuania but if those requirements are not met and you don't have let's say 18,000 troops minimum so you can actually have an easy war do not attack Poland and Lithuania it's smarter for you to just move into these lands and slowly slowly take it for yourself rather than wasting 10 to 15 years for a bunch of crappy shitty cores I mean 5 development, 3 development, 4 development like, there's no need, reason for you to waste time for this cross here. As for another trick here, that should be your secondary war goal. You can e uh, easily move into Italy after Genoa has uh, left the HRE. Uh, to do this, you only have a fleet. Remember this, that if you want to pull this off, you need to have a fleet. So you should build on, uh, perhaps in the, let's say, 1480s, if you really want to move on to that side. But this is considered as mid game simply because the general has to leave the HRE and uh, you might want to see who do, who they ally. Sometimes they ally friends, that's gonna be annoying. So Genoa is uh, question marks basically. It might happen, you might not be able to get it, you might be able to get it. It depends on their own allies and their own situation. But if at all possible, just simply attack Genoa and make Genoa into your... Into your um, into your bitch and uh, vassalize them basically uh, make sure that you take uh, this land here and uh, this land here as well let's see can we actually vassalize Genoa no we can't so they might they might you might have to do double wars against Genoa to vassalize them but remember you need a fleet to do this you might want to take your core back and uh, that's uh, Montenegro and Kaffa as well and leave them as of basically or um, even just take as of and Kaffa and just uh, prepare for the eventual vassalization uh, uh, when you take Montenegro, basically. Montegra, sorry. Then take this as well to have the, what's it called, the, the, uh, the colonism range, god damn it, the coring range, so you can actually move into Genoa and take Genoa and vassalize Genoa. Pretty much decent stuff, might be doable, might not be doable, but still, keep that in mind. So, mid game. It's over. Let's say that you basically uh, have these regions here. Let's say 100 years have passed. This is pretty much the end of the mid game. Uh, you have all the way up to here and posing a threat to Ming. If Ming has uh, been destroyed, you can actually take them and take lands from Ming as well. And uh, as for here, you have moved all the way into India and taken lands from India as well. And as for this side here, Kara is dead, the Timurids are dead as well. And these guys are dead Mamelukes with some hope are dead as well, or they are gonna or they are fed to the or they have been taken over by by the Ottomans. At this point in time, if at all possible, Poland Lithuania should be dead as well. If at all possible. Now this is gonna come as a problem. Uh, you're gonna have problems with the Ottomans. And the rest of the mid game and the late game we're gonna are gonna be uh, fight against the Ottomans and a fight of, against Moscow. Now, standard deviations from the current gameplay are this. You attack Moscow and kill them early. Right, kill them early if you want to. Uh, when you have, uh, let's say, 30 NATO troops, attack Moscow and kill them. Or if they revel, you kill them at that point in time. That is a standard deviation that will allow you to move into Novgorod, Sweden and this side as well, quite fast. This is a standard deviation simply because you might need Moscovy against Poland and Lithuania. But if Moscovy has rivaled you, you're not going to be able to use them and uh, they're going to be dead. Same goes for the Ottomans. If the Ottomans have rivaled you, 
you, you might want to ally the Mamelukes and start attacking the Ottomans or whatever rivals they have themselves or enemies so you can actually fight the Ottomans. But if you ally the Ottomans and Moscovy you should be able to force them to fight against Poland and Lithuania and that's gonna be golden. Uh, other problematic regions are China with Ming. If they do not dis get destroyed by their own problems there, uh, you're gonna be you're gonna have a tough time killing them. You're gonna need about 14 to 15 thousand troops to easily squash them uh, with no uh, to no with no uh, problems basically. As for India here, it might be problematic. It might not be problematic if they uh, starting start uniting really fast. By uniting, I mean uh, having uh, let's say five major powers that are allied with each other basically so you have uh, blocks so india is going to be spread into blocks of a uh, couple of couple of regional powers that have let's say 30,000 troops and with their other ally that has around 30,000 troops themselves uh, 30,000 troops themselves that's going to be 60,000 troops that you're going to have to fight which is not that great so if you can get into india really fast just take their heads off so there are not going to be that many problems with India. Other than this, there's not too much more to say. Crimea is a decently difficult nation to play as, mainly because you are sandwiched when, not sandwiched, but uh, really stuck uh, in this corner here. With uh, Lithuania at one part, Golden Horde being quite big, Kara being big as well, and the Ottomans being big. Uh, with the Moscovy growing large uh, by the second in the, in the north and the Timurids with a sizable force in the east. So that's gonna be really problematic on that part. But if you can manage uh, and use my steps, you're gonna be able to, to grow as Crimea really fast. I'm Chevalier, hope you enjoyed this uh, expansion guide and I'll see you next time. Ciao!